OK, so what we're going to do here is we're going to take a little look at using the FBX IK rig to edit some motion capture here in Lightwave. Just to help you out so that you can hit the ground running um, with the process for yourselves. Now, of course, I just mentioned quickly that this rig is, of course, for editing motion capture that we bring into Lightwave. There is no kind of retargeting, so you do still need to retarget your motion capture to the base skeleton somewhere else. Of course, that's nice and easy to do with something like iKinema's Web Animate or Animeeple. The pain that you have there is trying to edit the animation. There are tools for doing it, but they're not particularly great. In this case, this is a piece of motion capture I grabbed myself with a couple of connects using iPy DMC, which, if you're using that, has its own retargeting in, so you don't need any kind of third app in between. If you are using iPy, um, there's a wonderful little guide here in my YouTube collection that will detail getting your motions in and out of iPy soft with Lightwave. But having done that, I've got my motion capture here in Lightwave and I'm ready to start editing it. What we can see is that it's going on quite nicely, but it's a little bit imperfect. We can see the good old classic foot slide that we're getting. Um, not particularly great contact going on with some of the feet there. And we might, of course, want to alter this performance a little bit. So, first of all, let's take a look at baking off to the IK goals and see what we can actually bake. For the most part, it's pretty self-explanatory. You know, you bake the parts of the IK systems that you want to be able to use, including, of course, the root, should you want to use it. But there's a couple of other little things. For instance, if we look at the toes, you remember that in the IK hand animation rigs, we've got this little IK foot item that has control for the toes. You see that that's snapped there. You can see it turning when I turn the toes, so I can actually cross-bake this toe action into the IK if I so choose. So that's what I'm going to do for starters. So I'm going to grab the left and right foot IK goals there. I'm going to grab the IK foot controllers, and I'm going to grab the root there. I'm not going to bake the arms off to IK, because I'll edit those using the FK offsets, I think, for this scene. And then, of course, I'm going to use good old Mental Fish Motion Baker. Bake my range here, position and rotation only. Don't need scale. And we'll let that run its way through. There's also more details on my YouTube channel um, for rig baking as well that takes a look at using the Motion Baker, which is worth watching because the techniques are similar to what I'm doing here. OK, so with all of that baked off, then one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce my keys some here. So I'm going to load them all up here, set my reduction threshold, to a, a low value and just do a reduce keys recursive there to clean up the curves a little bit. I'm also just going to change these to linear straight off the bat for ease. And what I can now do is I can throw my root into IK, I can throw my legs into IK, but oopsie, right, okay, I've got a, a bit of a shift going on there because of course what I forgot to do was to bake off the twist rotation for the legs, so I'm just going to select the pole items there and give those a quick bake. They, of course, only need positional data. OK, that's great. So with that done, I can now throw in the good old IK here and turn on, of course, the poles as well for the two legs there. There we go. And we'll see that playing that back, we get basically exactly the same motion, of course, copied over here to our IK rig. Um, and we can start doing alterations and clean up. So the first thing I'm going to do is clean up. And we'll start here with the feet. I'm going to pop up the little track editor there. OK, so the feet have got this funny lift, as we can see. This is a common thing that I tend to find when using iPySoft. So I'm going to correct that. Um, let's put you down at zero here. I'm also going to position you back down at zero so you're nice and flat on the floor. OK, and we can see where the foot is supposed to be staying. OK, it lifts off just there. So what I'll just do is I'll delete those intermediate keys there. Take that first one that I corrected. So I also want to correct the bank for it as well. There we go. Post copy it. Post paste it there. Cut through to about there, which can be my tween as it were. Delete those keys. OK, there we go. We're now starting to get our little lift off there. And he sets his foot back down. And we see the foot starts to slip about a bit. So I'm going to come here and say, OK, that's the lock point there. Delete that next key to give myself a marker. And I'm going to say that it stays in place right up until... When does he lift off again? I'm going to say he should be locked up until this point. So do that. Delete my in-between keys there. Post copy, post paste. Once again, create myself a little tween section there. And you can see how I'm starting to fix that foot. There we go. Very nice. Um, we'll notice that he twists round a bit there, and of course the foot is now no longer twisting. He should probably be pivoting at the ball of his foot. So that ball pivot I can get through my control here. I'm going to delete all of the tween keys for that as well. 
little post copy paste there to make it even. Um, and I'm going to look at the point where I want it to start twisting. So say about somewhere here, I'm going to key it and up until there, we twist him on his ball, just like that. Come back here to our IK foot, key it there, come across to here and we bring the bank back down to zero to flatten him off like that. And back to our IK foot and there we are up to this point here. And there we go. So we can see how I'm fixing my foot action just like that. So that's great. I'm not going to go through and do the whole thing. I'm sure you get the idea of what I'm trying to do here and how quick and easy it is to apply those fixes. So there we go. There's that. Right. OK, I'm going to start looking at my arms now using the FK offsets. So I'm using the uh, shoulder offset here because I'm going to be working on the, um, on the clavicle. So I'm going to raise that up a little bit here on this guy. There we go. It's nice. I'm also going to put the arms out some here using their offset joints like that. That gives me a bit more spacing there, a bit of a rotation. That's quite nice. Yeah, here we have this point where his arms sort of jump up a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little action in there. Let's come around here, key it there. Let's figure out when we come out of it as well. So I'm going to say that we come out, let's say here at 181. So there we go. I'm just going to start twisting that up and pushing that back a little bit there. And here in mid-flight, somewhere around there, I'm going to turn his arm up this away, And there it comes back around. So we've got a bit of a an edit going on there. Very nice. I could probably do here actually with going through and adjusting the um, shoulder offsets as well. Obviously he's lifting his arm quite high there so I really want to lift his clavicle at the same time. Perhaps we can work a little additive motion in that way. A little bit of layered motion in there. There we go. Very nice. Now I also want to talk about the spine quickly. I like using the IK spine rather than do a FK offset. I'm going to use the IK offset here. Um, so I grabbed the two main spine items, the primary IK controllers there in blue. Now, there, there is something to note about the spine here. Um, the way that it's set up is a little bit complex, um, and Lightwave won't evaluate it properly on the first pass. You have to first of all bake the root item before you can bake the IK controllers for the spine. If you bake them at the same time, um, then the spine won't have updated its position correctly. You do have to bake the root first. So I'm going to give these guys a quick motion bake now, seeing as, of course, we already baked off the root. OK, so there we are all baked. So now back at frame one here, I'm going to throw my spine into IK, and I'm going to start working with the spine IK offset controls here. So he comes down into this. Let me just put a key there at position one, rotate that a little bit backwards. Now we come across here, does this first sort of dip, push him over a little bit there, bring him back to give him a bit more balance, completes his turn there, we'll start to dodge him back. You can see the offset motion that, that we're creating there on the spine, get him this far and we'll just sort of, um, well we'll just reset his value there, we'll hold it till about there. He's coming down on his bounce, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pitch him back into the side a little bit, some additional additive motion on his body there, push it off to the side ever so slightly as well, there we go, we get that, and by about frame 100 here I'm going to push it back to its normal position, but here somewhere he's starting to go a bit low, so I'm going to pitch him up, go, and so like that I can work on his spine some, here we go, far too low at this point I think, I'm going to cut him out of that somewhere in his mid-jump here, reset his value here, hold him there, and as he comes down far too low there, I'm going to bring him back up like this, there we are, let's over-rotate there, and move, very nice, okie dokie, so there we go, stops him coming down far too low, it's a little rough and ready in all honesty, but it's not bad, you can see where I'm going with this, and how I'm altering the overall pose there. I might want to correct for the hips a bit because as you can see his butt sort of sticks out a bit too much for my liking there. So I'm going to come in here and when he does his little landing, pitch the hip controller back like that. There we are. Stop him from getting too distorted in his torso there. Lovely stuff. And we can see where else I might use a bit of IK offsetting. I might for instance do some on the, on the feet here. So there's his little lift off point, there's his landing point, so I may on the in-between there choose to pull his leg across a bit, maybe it were intersecting, it's not in this case, but you know, if it were, give it a bit of rotation, push it up a bit higher. And so there we go, that's the basic process as we can see for cleaning up our mocap, fixing things, layering additional pose, 
and so forth on top. It's pretty quick, it's pretty easy, and once you go through it a couple of times, you'll find it very fast and intuitive to work with. So, thanks for watching, and happy mocap editing!